the controversial oh, protest is spreading. Sports and politics. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. It is historic. It is forever intertwined. He found a compromise solution to stand and pray during the anthem. Through methods like the form of protest. What is more important, night. human rights or winning football? And the struggle over a troubled past. In the 1960s, we saw the deaths of Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, bound for impeachment President Richard Nixon and the Vietnam War, Muhammad Ali's protest. A big, powerful America and shoot them for what? They never called me Nick. They never lynched me. They never put no dogs on me. They never robbed me of my nationality. The tragic shootings at Kent State University in Ohio and dissent in the form of mass protests spanned across the United States in hopes of equality. That joy from 1959 when they won the national championship with Ernie Davis, they were trying to get that back and they recruited us. The Syracuse Eight, a group of nine football players, was the embodiment of these variables in hopes of sparking a change. After arriving, these players became conscious of the unequal playing field inside and outside of football. Picked up from the airport by the man who recruited him, tailback Greg Allen was told, While you're here, we want you to get a great education and enjoy yourself, but also, we don't want you to date any white girls while you're here. Allen was also told he couldn't be a biology major because he wouldn't have time for labs. But he says that policy didn't apply to white players. White ball players had student advisors. We had students that was in the class that advised us. John Lovon, class of 1973. Ron Womack, in the book Leveling the Playing Field, the story of the Syracuse 8, said they didn't want DJ Dana Harrell to play quarterback. They didn't want too many blacks on the field at the same time. They didn't want a team dominated by blacks. Allen said, our medical doctor for our football team was a gynecologist by training. The recommendation for every injury was ice and rest. More than that, the doctor was hesitant to touch black bodies. With problems prevalent and solutions nowhere in sight, the players drafted a petition. Things got to change. Well, we decided after, after the, the 69 season um, that we needed to confront the coach and say, listen, you know, that, you know, there's some things that are going on here. The problem was Ben Schwartzwalder. Syracuse's head football coach and World War II hero was unreceptive and malfeasant. Their demands included a desire for better medical care, stronger academic support for African-American student athletes, a fair system for making the starting team and racial integration of the coaching staff. Since 1893, Syracuse didn't have a coach of color in any sport. We were simply asking them, why won't you recruit an African-American coach for the football team? What's this I hear about you and this black crap Coach Schwartzwalder said to Allen? You have a decision to make. You can't be black and be a football player. They demanded better medical treatment for all team members without regard to race, since Dr. William E. Pellow was a gynecologist. When their demands were not being met, they walked out of a spring practice to protest racial discrimination on campus. Really didn't bother to interview us. Did you get one interview at least? No. In many cases, we were demonized as radicals. The national media clung to one of the four demands, the hiring of a black coach. The coach acted like he was at war with us, and he manipulated the white players on the team to take that same attitude towards us. He got them to believe that the black players' boycott was an attack against not only the coaches in the football program, but against them. The nine members of the Syracuse 8 were suspended from the team. Some of their white teammates threatened to boycott if the black players were allowed back. Some of the fans threatened to boycott the games if we were ever allowed to come back, said Harrell. Over the summer, Schwartzwalder claimed he sent letters telling the eight to contact him by August or they'd be dropped from the team. The players said they never received those letters. Then weeks later, Schwartzwalder invited two players to come back. One of them rejoined the team. The other, Greg Allen, said no. With demands still not being met, they continued the boycott, sitting out the whole season. They would, however, retain their scholarships and be allowed to graduate. The eight were invited back to practice in September, but when they walked on the field, they were declared ineligible for different reasons and eventually suspended from the team. Pre-boycott, scouts flooded to many of the Syracuse 8. Post-boycott, from the NFL to the CFL, the blackballing was in effect. It was pure anger, Greg says. I was angry that I had to go through this only because I decided that institutional racism had no place at Syracuse University or any place else in this world. In 2006, 
The Syracuse Eight were invited back to receive the Chancellor's Medal, the university's highest honor, and their letterman's jackets. Although they brought changes to a school that was set to carry on a troubling, bigoted past, the players were the sacrificial lambs for the movement. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com slash rick.